Yo! Yo, yo, what is good, everybody? So different drinks have different amounts of ethanol. When alcohol is measured, it is called the alcohol proof, and the proof number is twice the alcohol percentage. So if you have an 80 proof vodka, it is 40% alcohol. And if you have a 200 proof vodka, then it's 100% alcohol and you are drinking gasoline. Welcome to Makeup Health, the show that recaps the stuff you missed or need to review. In case you missed it, we're continuing our discussion around drugs. Today, we'll be looking at the long-term and short-term impacts of using alcohol and a couple other common drugs. We'll also be looking at the primary active ingredient in each of these drugs. Let's get into it. Alcohol. Booze, juice, drink, sauce, hooch, brew. Whatever you call it, alcohol is popular all over the world, including the United States. Alcohol has a center stage role in our culture. According to survey data from the National Institute on Drug Abuse, in 2017, 55% of adults aged 26 and older had consumed alcohol in the past month, while just under 70% had consumed some amount in the past year. That's a lot, almost 70% of like adults use it? Wow. That same survey found 33% of high school seniors, just under 20% of 10th graders, and 8% of 8th graders had drank in the last month. Those numbers were higher when talking about drinking in the past year. Now, when you look at these numbers, what do you think about that? Why do you think the numbers are what they are? Alcohol's popularity is no secret. It has been popular for a long time, but how long is a long time? Thousands of years. Researchers have found residue of alcoholic beverages in China that date as far back as 7,000 BC. Now, these residues are similar to the ethanol we find in modern alcohol. Ethanol is the primary intoxicating ingredient in beer, wine, and liquor. Now, ethanol is produced by the fermentation of yeast, sugars, and starches. When we drink the fermented byproduct, we experience short-term side effects. The alcohol lowers our inhibitors and impairs our judgment and coordination. In doing this, it also increases the potential of aggressive or violent behavior. Now, when we binge drink, that is, consume large quantities in short periods of time, it can cause alcohol poisoning, which can lead to death. Alcohol can also prevent our brains from developing. This is why it's important for folks to limit their drinking in their legal 20s, as the brain is still in a state of development. Now, continuing to drink over long periods of time can cause some not so great impacts. Heavy use leads to addiction called alcoholism or alcohol use disorder and can cause liver and heart disease. It can severely weaken the immune system and increase a person's risk of developing certain cancers. LSD. Acid, blotters, dots, tabs, and dose. LSD is the most common hallucinogen and is one of the most powerful mind-changing chemicals. It is made from lysergic acid, which is found in ergot. Ergot is a fungus that grows on rye and other grains. So, acid comes from grain fungus. All right. In the short term, taking acid may provide a carefree, euphoric feeling. Fire. The way you did that. <laughs> However, it's important to remember the effects are also unpredictable and can be influenced by the amount taken, obviously, but also a person's personality, their expectations going into the experience, their mood, and their surroundings. Now, a person's ability to make sound judgment calls is severely impaired and can place individuals in dangerous situations. Along with hallucinations, other effects include increased heart rate, intensified emotions, and sensory experiences. So like, lights are brighter and sounds are more vibrant. Vibrant, vibrant, vibrant. A person's sense of time may also be altered. May also be altered. It is possible for people to have LSD flashbacks, even if they never use the drug again. It is also possible that the flashbacks persist and affect daily life. This is known as Hallucinogen Persisting Perceptual Disorder, or HPPD. Two things to remember about LSD. You can develop a tolerance to LSD. Also, LSD is not like Big Macs. So let me explain. LSD isn't produced by a consistent source. A person in most instances doesn't know where their LSD is coming from. And granted, most people don't know where their burgers are coming from, but all Big Macs are coming from the same main distributor. So unlike the Big Mac, which is the same everywhere, the LSD may not be the same across batches. Now this makes the tolerance bit more dangerous because as tolerance is built, more of the drug is needed to produce an effect. Taking larger amounts when it's unclear how potent the drug is can lead to... You're gonna have a bad time gonna have a bad time. A really bad time. 
Now, LSD is a classic hallucinogen, which means at high doses, it may produce an extremely unpleasant experience, but in most cases, the effects are not life-threatening. That isn't to say you can't die. There have been numerous fatalities related to LSD in the past. It's just not ridiculously common. In the long term, LSD can trigger psychosis, depression, aggression, and schizophrenia in individuals who are prone to these mental disorders. Cocaine. Blow, bump, coke, snow, or toot. Cocaine is a white powder made from the leaves of the coca plant. The active ingredient found in this plant is benzoyl methylgonigin. Benzoyl... Benzoyl menagothic... Benzoyl... whatever. After a person gets cocaine in their system, they may begin to feel intense feelings of happiness and sexual arousal. That's because the cocaine increases the levels of dopamine in the brain. So it just ends up backloading dopamine, so your brain's just like, ah! If you wanna get it down. Cocaine also increases alertness, irritability, and paranoia. Large amounts of cocaine can lead to bizarre, unpredictable, and violent behavior. Cocaine's effects appear immediately and fade within minutes to an hour. The duration depends on how you use it. Now, long-term effects of use can range from loss of smell, asthma, severe bowel decay, which, side note, is severe bowel decay when your butt rots out, contraction of HIV, hepatitis C, or other bloodborne pathogens, and granted, there are a lot more, but it really depends on how the drug was used, whether that be smoking, snorting, eating, or injecting it. Now, common long-term effects between all usage groups include malnourishment, because cocaine reduces appetite, movement disorders, such as Parkinson's disease, and severe paranoia. Marijuana. Mary Jane, loud, chronic, bud, dro, pot, ganja, herb, weed. Marijuana refers to the dried leaves, flowers, stems, and seeds from the cannabis sativa and cannabis indica plant. Marijuana contains hundreds of compounds that influence the human body, the main mind-altering chemical being THC. Now, marijuana is most commonly smoked, but it can also be eaten. How a person uses marijuana will influence how quickly they feel something. Smoking brings THC into the lungs, entering the bloodstream faster than if a person were to eat it. When a person smokes, they get high within minutes, while someone eating will start to feel the effects between 30 minutes to an hour after. Now, when the THC takes effect, the user experiences a pleasant, euphoric feeling and the sense of relaxation. Altered senses of time, changes in their mood, impaired body movement, difficulty thinking or problem solving, and impaired memory. When taken in high doses, THC can elicit hallucinations and delusions, and continued use of high doses can cause psychosis. Over long-term use, marijuana affects brain development. When people begin using marijuana as teens, it impairs thinking, memory, and learning functions, specifically impairing the way the brain builds connections necessary for these functions. Now, it's not yet known if this is permanent or if this will resolve after usage stops. Long-term use may also cause breathing problems and heart problems from constant strain on the respiratory and circulatory systems. Now, marijuana is the second most used psychotropic drug in the US behind alcohol. 11.8 million young adults reported trying marijuana in 2018. According to the Monitoring the Future survey, Rates of marijuana use among high school and middle school students has remained steady since legalization. However, the number of teens between 10th and 8th grade who use daily have increased. Why do you think the overall numbers have stayed consistent while daily use in 8th and 10th grade groups has increased? Heroin. Big H, horse, smack. Heroin is made from morphine, which is a natural substance taken from the seed pod of a variety of poppy plants. Now the poppy plant is cut to secrete a milky sap. This is refined into different forms, heroin being one of them. Now when heroin takes effect, it's said to cause a rush, like a surge of pleasure or euphoria. Other short-term effects include dry mouth, warm flushing skin, heavy limbs, nausea and vomiting, severe itching, clouded mental function, and going on what's called the nod a back and forth state of being conscious and subconscious. And if you've ever walked downtown in any city, you may see someone on the nod. When I used to live downtown Seattle, I used to see this guy on the nod all the time. And this is down by the old Greyhound station, so you know this is old because that's been gone now for years. 
Use over long periods of time can cause the user to develop insomnia, specific injuries related to use like damaged nose tissue from people who snorted or collapsed veins of people who injected. A person can develop infections in the lining of their heart valves and they can develop abscesses, stomach and constipation issues, they can get liver and kidney disease, mental disorders, and more. Yeah, there's more, so much more. Heroin you up. Fellas, continued use will break your penis. For real, sexual dysfunction is a long-term effect for guys. And ladies, it'll cause irregular menstrual cycles. And the list goes on. Yeah. So that's heroin, and what a note to end on. That will actually wrap up this one. We hope covering these impacts has helped you get a grasp of the short and long-term effects that can come from using different drugs. Of course, this is barely a drop in the massive bucket that are drugs. There are tons of drugs. Much of this information was found on the National Institute of Drug Abuse and the Partnership to End Addictions websites. They have much more information on many more drugs. If you're interested, I encourage you to do some research of your own. Links to their sites will be provided below. Now, if you have any questions, comments, want to schedule a one-on-one -on -one for help or support, you can reach out to me via Teams email. Uh, Teams will get a faster response. You can also reach out to the channel email down below, which is provided in the description. Thanks for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you again in class real soon. Until then, I'm Coach G. This is Makeup Health. Class is adjourned. Peace.